Welcome back to GIS Analysis at the University of Alaska Fairbanks. In this session, we're going to work with triangulated irregular networks, or TINs. And a TIN will basically be triangles where each triangle will have a slope direction and a slope gradient. And we'll create our triangles from our raster where we have regular grid cells. Our input raster will be the raster that we used from our last session. And then a tin will be a folder in your hard drive. So let's put this at NR435 and we'll name this tin. And then we'll just take the defaults for the remainder of the geoprocessing tool. So here is our tin. So let's turn off our raster. So you can see that it looks a lot like the raster, but now we have triangles rather than grid cells. So let's take our tin and let's float it 10 meters on top of our raster surface. And that way we can compare the two. Base heights will float it. It's gonna be using the triangles but we'll add 10 meter offset. So it's gonna be floating above our raster. So here is our 10 and there's our raster floating 10 meters below. So very similar, the only difference is we're using triangles rather than grid cells. And we can see those triangles by adjusting our symbology. So if we go to symbology, let's uncheck elevation and we'll add edges using the same symbol so we could see the triangles that way. Edges using the same symbol, and then you could pick whatever symbol you want to see your triangle. So let's use a red symbol. So there is our triangulated irregular network, and you can see that indeed they are triangles representing the surface and they're floating 10 meters above our elevation raster. And we could use the identify tool to look at the lines. There's three lines each triangle is composed of. So for example, what's the elevation along this line at this location? It's 80.15 meters. And along the same line, what's the elevation at this location? And it's 59.68 meters. Each line, we know the elevation and the slope and the aspect of each line. You can convert your tin into triangles as polygons using the tin triangle tool, which exports the faces of every triangle from the tin to polygon and then for each polygon that's basically shaped like a triangle, you'll have an attribute for slope. And in this case, we'll choose percent slope. And then we'll also have aspect for each triangle facet. So we we'll input our tin, and then we'll output the name of our polygon feature class. And I'll put it in this test 3D. So they're going to be polygons, but they'll be shaped like triangles. So the polygons, if we look at the attribute table, are polyline Z, so they're in three dimensions. We have the X, Y, Z coordinate at each line vertex that describes each polygon. For example, here's a polygon, and here's a polygon. And we might not see it, it's down here. We might ask, well, let's find the steepest triangle. So if we sort descending, here is the steepest triangle. And you can see that it is indeed very, very steep. We also have the aspect of each triangle. For example, we might want to find this triangle, which is a south-facing triangle. So there's the south-facing triangle. Or this triangle that's a north-facing triangle. So there's a the north-facing triangle. Let's symbolize our tin if we go to properties and we'll symbolize it using elevation and let's symbolize it elevation interval of 10. So if we go to classify, define interval, 
and our interval size will be 10 meters. So then we have from 4 to 10 meters all the way up to 90 to 100 meters. So now we've got our tin symbolized every 10 meters. And let's use our original fish net and we'll assign that a base elevation of 50 meters. Base height, a constant value of 50 meters. So here is our reference plane of 50 meters. We can use the same tools that we used with rasters, we can use with tins. What is the volume below 50 meters? We can use the tool surface volume. Our reference plane, we're interested in the volume below 50 meters, so our plane height would be 50 meters. And then that will output to this text file the volume on this surface that's below this reference plane of 50 meters. We can also do things like create contours from our triangulated irregular network. So our input surface is our 10, and let's do contour intervals of 10 meters, and we'll output this to our test geo database, and let's call this contour 10 meters from our 10. And then we'll have to assign our base height for our contour lines, use the expression contour. Here are our contour interval 10 meter contours. Now how does that compare with the contours that we created using our elevation raster from our last video session? They'll be slightly different. So here's the contours from our elevation raster. And then properties use the contour field in 3D. So you can see that they're very similar. One advantage of tens is they require less disk space. For example, you can represent with an area that has a uniform topography, you can represent it with large triangles and areas that have high variation in topography you could represent with smaller triangles. Unlike grid cell based elevation rasters where you're basically forced to use the same size grid cell even if it's flat as a pancake you might have hundreds of grid cells in an area that's flat as a pancake. So that's one advantage of tins that we can vary the size of triangles based on how variable is the topography.